There we go. Refresh your browser and we should be back. There we go. So, why are we on uh, Facebook at the same time? Glad you asked. Facebook is going to be a big part of the channel of the of the process going forward. Because reality is, guys, the audience on YouTube is what it is. Love you guys, but we're gonna grow. And as we're talking about. Where are the good men? Where are the good women? You know, that is a question that has been pushed out quite a bit. Where is everybody at? Well, uh, we're going to find them. We're going to help each other, help people find each other. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's go. So, we're back. We are back. We are back. We are back. Do me a favor, guys. Do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen. As we come in, you know how we do. Put your name, I mean your age, your city, and your gender. Your age, city, and... Is there something... Uh, age, city, and gender. I didn't say... The, I didn't say your name, chick. I said city and gender. Justin, what's going on? Mr. Bowtie, what's up? Let's get it. Had to leave the folks up on Facebook hanging. I don't like having things half done and kind of just wishy-washy. So uh, we're getting it in here. Uh, in Atlanta, man, I I'm going to say I'm disappointed with the city. I'm disappointed with a lot of things I saw today. Um, you know, George Floyd, that, that's a beyond horrific, but that didn't have nothing to do with Hermes. It didn't have nothing to do with Dior. You got a lot of people down here just capitalizing off this man's uh, murder. Capitalizing off this man's murder not cool and when his peoples are asking are there two shows going on at the same time that shows down and when his peoples is asking uh what the, to please stop to please knock it off i'm kind of like in line with his people but here's what we're going to do today last night i had a show talking about you know, addressing a popular talking point. We're all the good men. We're all the good men. We're all, in particular, all the good black men. And I kind of broke it down that, that there are not only good black men, they are plentiful. The question is uh, not where are they? The question is, are you willing to go where they are, number one? And number two, do you know what to do when you find one? I make no bones about it, guys. In the last month, this channel has been like a go-to spot for a lot of relationship kind of conversation. And I've had uh, several different matchmakers and people like that kind of reach out to me uh, with different ideas. Uh, like I said, I am not a dating coach. I am not a dating coach. I am not a dating coach. I'm an image consultant. I work with dating coaches and matchmakers and personal trainers and those kind of folks. But I, I got to tell you, man, back when I was in college, when I was on the yard, you know, uh, Cap Alpha Psi had been suspended when I got to the yard. And I actually helped revitalize our chapter. Why? Because in addition to being on the yard academically, I was very good at stepping with my you know, I, I threw good parties. 
I took over being being the uh, party coordinator for the frat. So when it was time for us to have our parties, I was in charge of it. When it's time for us to have our mixers, our Greek mixers, I was in charge of it. When it was time to bring the cap of sweethearts and stuff back to the yard, I was in charge of it. And how many of you guys went to college? If you went to college, one of the cool things about being in any fraternity is they had what was called auxiliaries. Kappas had sweethearts or diamonds. And, you know, to pledge a fraternity, you had to, you know, raise your hand, go through the smoker process, go through the pledge process. And if you made it, become initiated to a fraternity. Well, there were always going to be women. Women are always going to be around guys who are doing stuff. And when women used to want to be members of the Kappa Alpha Psi Auxiliary, the sweethearts or the diamonds, uh, so they want to help us, just like you see a lot of women who like to help men over in the manosphere, okay? Um, auxiliaries have never been an official part of any organization, but Alphas had angels, the Qs had, uh, what were the Qs? Were they the pearls? Forgive me if I missed that, brothers. Were they the pearls? The, the, the Sigmas were the only ones that didn't really have, the Sigmas had doves. But Sigma and Zeta Phi Beta are brother and sister organizations. Hell, AKAs even had Miyakas, men interested in AKA. And Deltas had Midis, men interested in Delta Sigma Theta. So these have always been around. And the trick is, for me, when I took over the, the, the diamonds, I made sure this happened. Look, whenever another brother comes onto the yard, he gets the red carpet treatment. When brothers come in town, if they want to dance, you dance. You come in here to be a perfect host and guest to the members of the fraternity. You are you are basically, uh, and when you're on the yard, you are meant to uphold the highest uh, standards of lady uh, being a lady because you represent us. Now, I ha there were some times where women would become sweethearts, and if they wanted to pledge a sorority, go do that thing. But you could not be a, a, a Kappa sweetheart and be a, a girlfriend of an Alpha or a Sigma or a Q. And the funny thing is, during my time on the yard, we had some of the most attractive, feminine, beautiful, inspirational women anywhere. People will come from far and wide to come to the Kappa parties because they knew it was going to be a stone cold jam, beautiful women, and just how we do it. So bottom line is this. Uh, along those same lines, guys, YouTube is a great place for videos, but Facebook is where it's at for conversations, groups, and everything else like that. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it's meant. That's what it's built for. Uh, and, and, and why try to reinvent the wheel? If that's what the thing is built for, that's how we're going to use it. So today, I asked you guys if you wanted to do a part two to this show. You said you did. That's the call-in show today. We're going to do that call-in show today where the men and women talk. We're going to talk about ladies. Can you handle a good man? Do you know what to do with them when you find them? But on starting today, I'm announcing something called The Mix. Time to get up in the mix. What is The Mix? Glad you asked. The Mix is a place, is a private Facebook group and a fan page. There's a fan page and then there's a private group. And it's basically where CIA men and FBI women go to do professional and personal networking. It's going to be run by me, moderators, and yes, I'm going to run it just like I run this channel. You can't go in there, just understand something. You got to be a CIA man to be in here. You will be vetted by me. You have to be CIA man to be in here. Whether you're Blue Henry or Blake Henry or Hit Squad, you got to be in it. So, because here's the thing. I'm not going to have a group full of dusty dudes. And I'm not going to have a group full of, and you have to be an FBI woman to be a part of it. I'm not going to have a bunch of ratchets and anything else like that. <laughs> nope. I don't need 50, 11 million people. All we need is the best of the best of the best. People who are wanting to get that. People, men who want to network with men, women who want to network with women, and men and women who want to network with one another. That's right. 
Time to get up in the mix. How do you guys like that? It's a good idea, right? It's a good idea. Oh, you like the glasses? Check out the glasses. Shout out to my Q Dog brothers and my, my Omega brothers in the house. All the Q's should love those, man. Purple lenses with the gold. Ooh. Let me take these off. That's a good idea, right, Honey Lemon? Here's the thing. And here's the thing. Where all the good women at? Uh, in the mix. That's where they at. They're coming over here. So in order to be a member, in order to get in, you just have to answer some basic questions. Age, current marital status, and what kind of relationship are you interested in? That's it. It will be moderated uh, for language. It will damn sure be moderated for a kind of post. Come in there and try to post up some, some crazy pictures if you want to. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. I'm not gonna have anybody dragging this stuff down. I, and however it grows, it grows. If it grows to be 200 people, as long as they 200 CIA men and FBI women, I'm good. If it grows to be 200, 200,000, two million, cool. But tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Now I'm not asking for W2s. I don't need to know all that. But uh, I am going to ask for background information on men. Because here's the thing. You're not going to come up in the group uh, fronting. I don't have time for it. Don't nobody have time. It's grown damn people over here. Grown damn people. So uh, W-2s, no. But we are. But I am going to ask for your LinkedIn profile too. See, the beautiful thing about Facebook is you get a person. You see their real name. And you don't get to hide. So if you are who you say you are, cool. I want CIA men to be able to network and collaborate with one another. Cool. What is meant by CIA? Somebody want to tell him what? Sir, are you an ex-pimp? Ask your mama. Ask your mama. Dumb mother sucker. <laughs> Do you see the do you see why the group has to be limited? That after all of that speaking, you would ask a man if he's a pimp. How many pimps do you know that went to college? You stupid. See, this is why you got to separate you yourself from these people, guys. This is why you got to separate yourself. Wait till the broadcast I do on Monday. I am going to lay you mush mouth, ignorant talking. What's up, cuz? What up, bro? What up, cool, cuz? Hey, but maybe you be do be wobble 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 wobble. And you wonder why no one in the world treats you like you have any sense. But you sound like a Fat Albert character. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen over here around not not around these guys, bro. Know what I'm saying? No, I'm talking about. No, I'm talking about all all that southern thick tongue, uh, fill in the blank conversation. I expect to be talking to grown men, men who could stand up in front of a group of people and express themselves. And if that ain't what it is, you need to go get a book, get your hooked on phonics, get your reading up, because I have no more time for little boys. We have made it far too easy to accept less than. Nope. Far too easy to accept less than. I was on Obsidian show earlier today. I was like, you know, you should look at how they market to to black women and how black men are marketed to and be offended. But instead of trying to fight that reign, I'm going I don't want to present a different picture and let the market sort itself out. Hey man, if you if you feel like, you know what, I'm gonna talk like this because this is how I gotta keep it real and you know what I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. If that's why you feel okay, cool. If that's what you feel like you have to do, go over there. 
Let the market sort itself out. But I believe, and I've seen that there are more folks that really want to do things in a grown up, a grown sexy kind of way, other than this ratchet, thug way of thinking about stuff. Nope. And I'm not looking for education. And that's all, you know, uh, one of the things that was compelling about Malcolm X, that even back in his Detroit Red days, that Malcolm X liberated his mind and he was a self-educated man. So I don't buy the fact that because you got some dirt on you or because you grew up in a certain area of a country or a certain kind of background that you cannot be well-read, well-spoken. Keep on, keep, keep, keep making fake profiles and you will keep continuing to get blocked. Mr. Bowtie, understand something. These are the men, these are the males that drag down the image of men. So, at the end of the day, whatever your, whatever your little boys and your daddy issues are, hey man, we all got issues. Go out there and take care of it. Because here's what it can't be. Here's what it cannot be. Well, here's what it's been far too long. This extremes over here and extremes over there controlling the conversation. While the people in the middle are being held hostage by extreme people. Nope, not going to do it. Ex the people in the middle cannot be held, held hostage by extreme people. So understand something. This is not a channel for... Uh, Extremist MGTOWs, extreme swirlers, none of that stuff. No. Nope, nope, nope. This is the channel for people who really, at the end of the day, like people. They want to build a network of people. Mm-hmm. I just need a positive role model, Mr. Kevin. Can you mentor me? Not for free. I don't do anything for free, young man. If you need a mentor, you're glad you're more than welcome to join my Patreon at the assistant director level. You have two Patreon calls with me a month. Yeah, that guy's understand this. 80% of men. See, if, if you got to go down to the fact of looking at a woman and say she can be 300 pounds and, and you'll look at her face, they don't present that to anybody else other than you guys. Show me a 300 pound Shanghainese woman. Show me a 300 pound uh, Italian woman. Show me a 300 pound Iranian woman. Show me a 300 pound anything that they shove down these other men's throats. Mm -mm. That's the thing. And when we, and here's, here's the thing I, I said on Obsidian's channel, if you click, if you follow these people on Instagram or Facebook, if you, if you watch anything they put out, you're purchasing it with your, with your free, like you're purchasing it. There's no way in the world Women like that should have 300 plus thousand followers. But if you look at those, the people that follow her, it's minimum wage dick. The dudes that follow the, these women are minimum wage penises. And if you're a minimum wage dude, you can't be, you take what you can get. She got a cute face though. Yep. Broke man talk. Many dudes smash those uh, land wells. Yeah, minimum wage earners. Right. So, that's it. When you... Sorry. There's no way. So, instead of having the same conversations, what we're looking to do is 
move the needle forward. And here's the thing. They're going to be, as you, like any of you guys know, like any of you ladies know, as you begin, as you uh, start to progress, you're going to start leaving people behind. And you're going to need to be, and here's the problem. DT, Amen. Uh, Raven, understand something. Here's the problem. Usually when we leave people behind, there's a hole in your life. Mr. Chris, if you need me to do anything, it's going to cost money. I do nothing for free. Nothing like no. And if you honestly need to mentor something like that, do it the right way. Go to my website or go to my Patreon and purchase the service and what you need. I don't need the sob story. Understand something. When we talk about separating from people, the, the fear for people separating from people and going on and being the best version of themselves, is they're afraid that they're going to be alone in the journey, that they don't have anybody to talk to. Well, in the mix, you're going to have other like-minded people to talk to. You're going to have other like-minded people to talk to. So how do you get up in the mix? How do you get in the mix? Well, all you have to do is request membership. Here you go. Now, the group is starting to form, guys. So give me a second. The, uh, the group is called The Mix, uh, has, and it's going to be Mix, Match, Repeat. And then the, page, the, uh, the uh, fan page is The, is the Mix. Got it? So here's the group. It's a closed group. It's a private group. Mm-hmm. It's a private group. There is the group. And here's the fan page. The fan page will have stuff that's for the public. But the private page is for members only. For members only. That's really what it gets down to. All right. So now we got that out of the way. All right. So guys, so basically, without even knowing I was going to do this, basically we said this. Where are all the good women at? Where are all the good men at? Where are all the CIA men? Where are all the CIA women? Do they even exist? We know they exist. Here they are. Now we're going to put them all in kind of one place digitally where you can in one place digitally where you can say this person has at least answered some basic questions some basic questions and i will have the basic information because if you come in here lying talk about i'm 34 years old single and i'm looking to be married oh yeah <laughs> and it gets fine and you find it found out you're trying to be up in everybody's inbox hollering at them and it turned out you really are married man please you don't want those problems don't come in there lying i don't care what you are just don't come in here lying so all right how many people uh, and do me a favor on facebook uh in the mix forward it out to your like-minded friends that's the beautiful thing about Facebook and Instagram that you can't really do on YouTube as well. You can forward it out to like-minded people. So are you guys okay with that idea? What do you guys think about that? Are you, is that a good thing? Now, this is for networking. Personal networking, professional networking. All I'm saying is they're going to be confident, intelligent, assertive, minded men there. All I'm saying is there's going to be feminine, beautiful, inspirational minded women there. Whatever you grown people decide to do for networking, whether you want professional, personal, if you want dating, what meet up, go to the cigar shop. That's it. Grown people should be able to take care of themselves. The mix, the mix, get up in the mix. So. 393 people watching, almost 400 people watching. Uh, how many people do you think here in Atlanta were down here knocking over place, looting and robbing and carrying on were Henry's? How many Henry's do you think was out here looting and robbing, ladies? Dudes, fellas, 
How many Henrys do you think was out here knocking over Dior and Todd's? I mean, they 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 broke they they broke into Kroger, fam. How many how many Henrys, high earners, not rich yet, was out here stealing meat overnight at Kroger's? Anybody? How many people? How many how many of them do you think were out there doing that? The Gucci and Louis store. Man, embarrassing. Because, see, here's the thing. Henry's, if they even like Gucci, they'll go buy it. But most of the dudes don't even like Gucci like that. Louis and all that other kind of stuff. They ain't into all that. They're into classic masculine fashion. I like designer belts, but I have a different style personality. Most guys don't like that kind of stuff. Most guys dress classic masculine fashion. Most black men dress like Idris Elba on the cover, like Idris Elba when he played Stringer Bell, Ghost on Power. Uh, look, like, look like they could be plucked out of uh mad men or anything most black men are classic masculine fashion and there's just not a, a place for that kind of fashion kroger yeah fam kroger D disgusting stupid shit right so i look at it this way guys as a good way to separate yourself from the pack because when it comes down to saying where the good men at, where the good women at, uh, they can be found doing the stuff that you do. See, one of the things I've noticed, especially with, with black folks, is we've lost the ability to gather. A lot of black men and women used to find themselves, find each other at college or church. Because so many men have stopped going to college for good reason. And to stop going to church for good reason, there's really no place to find like-minded people. So the nightclub and all that kind of thing. See, see, nightclubs are hit or miss. You know, there were there are no more upscale nightclubs like it was 20 years ago. 20, 30 years ago, you used to have the Palladium, which was the hip hop club. They used to have Club Phoenix, which was the, you know, the R&B, Neo Soul kind of club. Now, right now, all you got is one thing. So understand something for today's uh henry's and phoebe's you're going to have to come up with creative ways in order to be able to find one another because it just does not exist it just does not exist like it used to okay doesn't exist like it used to and here's the thing one of the best ways to find like-minded people is to make sure between that you always are, have your image together. See, CIA dudes know that they don't just need to take care of their image when they're going to a job interview or whatever. They, they look the part always. Hey, Kevin, you got me in trouble? Uh, today I tried your suit Saturday while shopping with my daughter. She did not like sharing attention with me. I kept asking why, why no ring. Bruh, suit Saturday is brilliant. Okay, how you doing? How you doing? Suit Saturday is brilliant. See, and you don't have to have a shirt and tie on. So, um... How many ladies in the chat room? How many ladies are in the chat room? How many ladies are in the chat room? Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and open stream up. I want y'all to talk to one another. I want y'all to talk to one another and talk about how it will be. Um, because I think we're past the conversation over here. I think over here, people are past the conversation saying, you know, we're all a good man. As you've seen by the, the last the last few streams, a lot of women are like, uh, look, 
I'm trying to get my my good look on, my good smell on, so I can be found. That's what that's what we've seen more than anything else, guys. We've had, actually had people, we've actually had women come through trying to be found. So let me go ahead and drop the link in the chat room. Drop the link in the chat room. I here's what I want you to do. I was tagged in a video. Join the show. I was tagged in a video by Big Beer Business. Shout out to B. And one of the, one of the things that was tagged in is like, okay, we talk about getting compliments, getting compliments, getting compliments. He's like, well, what would you say after the compliment? What do you say after the compliment? Cool. Gotcha. What do you say after the compliment? How to break the ice. Let's talk about it. How do Blakes and Blues and Hit Squads and Phoebes and Gidgets deal with one another? Rock those shades again? Sure. Blakes and Blues, Phoebes and Henry. Black women using male mating techniques in order to attract men. That's why they end. But see, here's the thing. John Smith, we're not doing that over here. See, see, guys, what we're going to have to do, man, is the men, you're going to have to evolve your conversation. The women, <laughs> what happens when you run across a black woman that ain't doing that? What happens when you run across a woman who ain't doing that? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I'll be honest, man, I live here in Atlanta and I don't have a lot of problems that a lot of guys have. I run into a nicer caliber of woman. And it's because of how I carry myself in the places I go. See, guys, and, what we're going to have to do, man. Yeah. Do me a favor, Angela. I need you to mute your YouTube channel. What happens when you run? Angie, I need you to mute your YouTube channel. Uh -uh. Anybody that comes in, I'm going to need you to mute your YouTube channel in the background. F Phoebe. Phoebe is a short I call FBI Phoebe's. Cause Blake, Blake stands for Brad, Lee, Ahmed, Keith, and Enrique. Five different races of high earners, not rich yet. White collar men. Then I call all my blue collar men, blue collar Henry's, blue Henry's. And then guys who are like 25 and under who had that mindset, I call them hit squad. Henry's in training. But today we're talking about Keith Henry, the, the brother who's the high earner, not rich yet. I didn't want to go through all that trouble with women. So it's feminine, beautiful, inspirational. It's Phoebe. It's Phoebe. It's Phoebe. It's very simple. Just Phoebe. And the thing is, just some old guy said, I'm just learning to dabble in clones. I avoided in the past. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Where's my Red Bull? Right there, fam. Don't, don't avoid cologne, man. Cologne is your friend, man. Cologne is your friend. Let me tell you something. Now, this is not for everybody. This is this is a cologne to make you you'll probably cuss at me for putting this up there. But this stuff right here, this Roja Dove, whoo! Now, you know this is an expensive cologne just by the bottle. But I'm going to tell you, man, I made a video today, Aqua Di Gio, let me go ahead and pull it up. Aqua Di Gio Profumo, Profundo. Dope fragrance, man. Today, I'm just going to have a free for all. Ask the questions that you want. But the thing is, do you guys know how to talk to one another? Do any of you guys know how to talk to one another? Seriously. Because I really, I'm really curious. Cause, because I see so many guys, young men today, who really uh, need to sharpen up their communication skills. Let's look at the video. Aqua Di Gio Profundo, we have something to talk about here. Uh, welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. My name is Kevin Samuel, your godfather style. And guys, in today's video, we talk about my favorite designer fragrance on the planet, period, and it's kick-ass cousin. If you like this kind of video, cool, go ahead and subscribe. Drop that like down below. Shout out to the CIA. What's going on, you modern, sexy savages? This little bottle right here, Aqua Di Gio Profumo, 
what I call the best designer fragrance on the planet, period. It's just that, the best designer fragrance on the planet, period. You know what I think about this fragrance, guys. And then this big boy right here in Senza, especially for summertime, look at how much I've used of this bottle. This stuff just is in freaking incredible for the high heat. This one all year round, this one for the high heat. What else do you need? Now, of course, I don't have the original OG Aqua de Joe because honestly, I like the Perfumo version better and in Senza. But then we had an announcement that Aqua de Gio was adding a new one to the line, Profundo. I'll admit, I have not been a fan of the most recent Aqua de Gio flankers. I thought they were kinda, uh. So, I waited a second before this one came out, and I said, let me just lay back in a cut, see what happens. Well, as I was out and about, I saw it on shelves, and I actually did not look at reviews or anything like that. I didn't wanna be tainted. I saw a bottle on a shelf and do they did yourself not have a, test. a favor and, said, and go check out the rest of that video. I promise you guys, you give me five minutes, I'll give you the world. Give me five minutes and I will give you the world. Anybody who's ever paid, anytime I go all in on a fragrance and, and give it high, high marks, it is because I have tested it in the real world. In the real world, yeah, it's, there's a problem when you actually try to, uh, yeah, I got it, Ray's. Um, it's a problem with Ecamm. Ecamm does the uh, 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 live videos fine, but anytime you try to play a, a file, it all it does this. Um, but I may actually hit the owners up because they're YouTubers. Um, what was I saying? Aqua de Jo Profumo. If I tell you guys about something and I give it high marks, blind by worthy, it's because I've worn it out and about in public and got women. I've had people ask me about it. I've had women stop me. I don't. I'm very leery about putting high marks on a fragrance. Because I know guys will go out and buy it. And I want you to have a similar experience. But what do you guys do after the compliment? Do I wear suits every day? Uh, no. Do I wear suits every day? Uh, no. Not every day. Most days. Uh, so let me, let me explain. Niner by nature, 88. Yes. Here's why I wear suits. I'm a professional man. And as an... Who's going to hire an image consultant running around in t-shirt and jeans? I mean, I need you guys to understand how low the standard for manhood is fallen when we have guys who, not you, Niner, but a lot of guys wonder, why, why are you dressed up? Why are you dressed up? And I'm like, do you not understand? And I think a lot of you guys just don't simply understand the long-term impact it has on how people look at you. So if you're like 25 or 26, all your friends are in the same age range, but none of your friends have any power. And in order to actually be looked at and given opportunities and shots, you have to be picked. And dressing for, men are logical. You're supposed to dress for outcomes, not comfort. When it comes to image, what should women wear when they want to be casual, but also present themselves well? I get the athleisure isn't the way to go, but what is your suit Saturday equivalent for women? Good question. Good question. Okay. So here's what I would suggest the average woman. You looked on my Amazon, you couldn't find it. Okay. Um, just find Amazon. Just go to Amazon, period. I'll check that link, Marty, but sometimes uh, sometimes supply goes up and down. Okay, so what to wear on Saturdays? Well, Suit Saturday is the thing, uh, Chica. Let me put it back up. You want to, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but on Saturday, you want to catch the attention of Blake, Blue, and Hit Squad. 
and they need to be able to see you at a glance so they know your FBI. Understand? So what you want to do is you want to, it, the bare minimum, in spring and summer, you want to wear sundresses. Sundresses are great for black women. You know, a nice yellow, cream color, maybe even a tangerine, uh, bright colors like that. Pinks work. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, those work for casual outing, something you could sit on the patio in a brunch. Okay. Uh, if you want to take it and that's casual and you want to have on heels, no flats, no flip flops, no sandals, heels. Um, why am I not for women wearing jeans and things like that? Because a lot of times jeans get off the wrong image. Jeans and heels come off sexy. And you don't necessarily want men looking at you directly as a sex object up front. You need to be sensual, but not sexual. Um, this is why pencil skirts are so good for women. Pencil skirts and, and blouses are great because you can make the, you can make that easy to wear. It can, it can be casual. You can even you can even dress it up. Again, ladies, you are dressing for um, outcomes. And what happens more often than not? How many ladies would, would, would readily admit, dang, I saw a Henry, but shit, I was I wasn't looking right. I saw you. Know, how many times you hear a woman say, or know it's a woman like, I saw this brother out the corner of my eye and he was looking like a whole snack, but I was not looking right. My hair wasn't right. My makeup wasn't right. I didn't have to, I would do, I just, I just come out of yoga class and that's a problem. That is a problem because that means you are not a Phoebe. See, Phoebe is not going to let any chance slip. Understand something. When let me see, let me let me pick a guy. Let me pick a guy. When one of my when one of these dudes is out and about, Phoebe wants to separate herself from the crowd because she's trying to get chose. She is trying to become a pick me, pick me. Yes. Pick me, pick me, make me your pick me. Let's talk about it. And let's see if you qualify, if I qualify to be your wife and you qualify to be my husband. Great. So now we can go off and have our life together. And I don't have to be out here in this single rat race anymore. Doing, doing, uh, riding a CC and running up your body count. This is a good thing. So when you leave your doors, ladies, do not, you need to be on there. If you're not on, what do I, when I tell my boys, if you're not ready, go back in the house. Do not, if you're not ready, go back in the house and see, it's simple. See, uh, and, and where's Niner? Niner by nature, Niner by nature. I dress in uniforms. My suit is a uniform. So I know what looks good on me. If you notice when you see me, it's usually, a, it's always a white shirt. I've gone through my phases where I wore black shirts, uh, different color shirts, but now I have standardized. You see me, it's usually in a dark, well-cut suit. Blue, uh, dark gray, black. There may be a pinstripe. There may be a, I have a, I have a, 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 a checkerboard or a pattern, but it's usually the same kind of suit, solid tie, polka dot tie. I mean, solid dot, dotted tie. It's the same look, but what changes is my frames, fragrance, and my footwear. It's a uniform. See, you guys see me often, but even a lot of when you guys see me, you're like, wow, look at how that fits. But you got to remember, most people are only going to see you once a, once in life. You want that to, you want to leave an impression upon these people even if you're not hollering at them. So let's say I was going to be talking to, uh, what's her name? I don't know how to pronounce your name. Homegirl that I just took her picture down. 
I want to leave an impression on her. I want her to say, wow, that was a good smelling brother that just walked by. Mm. Even if I'm not her type, I, I want her to say that about me to make it easier for the next FBI, next CIA brother that walks up on her. That's what I want. I want to raise um, the profile of men. Polka dot dresses are lovely. On, yes, depending on your style and personality, but I, I co-sign that. Uh, let me go ahead. Raven, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, is that dark blue or black? I, I don't do blues. P style personality. I do blues and blacks. This is why you guys need to book a one-on-one -on -one style console. Don't, don't just try to pick this out of the air, man. Getting your style personality wrong cost you tens of thousands of dollars. What's going on, uh, Raven? Uh, hi. Um, hey. Kevin, how are you? I am well. Hi. What, what you got for me? Um, yeah, I have a question for you, actually. Um, I wanted to know if you would be able to explain to me why is it that um, most men, not all, have a feminine quality to them? Okay. And I do know I hear a lot, uh, a lot of guys say that, you know, females have this masculine uh, energy um, as well. But I would mm -hmm. like to know, is, do you have an answer for that? Yes. Yes. How old are you? I'm 38. 38. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you've been hanging around my channel, you know that eight out of 10 black children are raised by their mother. Right. Okay. So eight out of 10 black men are raised by mama. Mm -hmm. The first time they encounter a masculine presence is usually in authority because they're not a lot of black male school teachers. So in, in their Developmental years in daycare and elementary, you don't see a lot of male elementary teachers, do you? The first time they encounter men mm -hmm. tends to be a uh, junior high or high school, and that tends to be some sort of athletics coach. If a guy doesn't get into athletics, the first time he's going to see male role models tends to be late in his academic life. So he's, a, he's raised around to a lot of women. Okay, in the schools today, there's no more recess. So boys are actually in the classrooms taught to sit and, and conduct themselves like girls. Boys aren't allowed to go out and run, tear up stuff and stink because it's looked right. at toxic masculinity. OK, then you see the average mother. The average mother wants to keep her son safe. So she's not going to put her son in uh, martial arts. Anything that's going to get him bumped and bruised. Do you have any friends that have right. children? Yes, I do. And do they have boys? Yes. Do they yes. have? All, do you have any mm -hmm. friends that have boys and girls? Yeah. I guarantee yeah. you they treat their. I guarantee you they baby their boys. And uh, if you ask the boy and the girl, I, I guarantee the daughter is like she's easy on him. Mm-hmm. Yep. They baby their boys. That is true. So, and even from my own, I guess from my own background, mm -hmm. with my brother and being raised as a. You know, my mom was a single, a single mm -hmm. parent and mm -hmm. I have brothers and sisters and, you know, she always treated my brother like her baby, mm -hmm. like, you know, that. So was he I older or younger than you? He's younger. Did mm -hmm. you resent that? When I was younger, I did. Yes, I, did. I know. I, really I, I know. Like, oh my gosh. Like she treated him like, you know. I know. I've sat down and counseled no many women with this and. See, mm -hmm. they're compensating with their boys. And mm -hmm. here's the thing, and they're not doing it on purpose. See, your mm -hmm. mother did, your mother is trying to make sure that you can protect yourself and defend yourself and not need no man because it's rough out here. She didn't tell you right. to go become somebody's wife. She raised you to be right. independent. Then she raised right. her son to be a softer man. So that's true. So look at the two of you. You go out in the world hard. Your brother goes mm -hmm. out in the world soft. And we soft. wonder why these yeah. two groups can't get together. <laughs> eh, you're right. I was raised the same way. Right. See, I was. I, I had to actively fight against it. 
Um, and here's the thing. I need black women to understand. We know you're not doing it on purpose, but it doesn't matter because black women raise the very men they cannot stand, these softer guys. So at 38 years old, do you have children yourself? No. Okay. No. So um, are you looking to get married or what? Um, no, if it's in God's plan, I don't rush nothing though. It's just, I, I didn't hear if you. The right person comes along, then hey, yes. No, no, you know who you're talking to. <laughs> you talk to girl, like, oh, I can't see you. Do you want to be somebody's wife or not? Um, yeah, yeah. I think that would be every man's, I mean, every woman's like, you know, dream, right? You know, to get married. Well, but sis, that's but, what we're here for. But sis, so. but, but, but sis. Notice how even when I asked you the question, you were hesitant. To, yeah. You were hesitant to double down on. It. You were like, "I can't say that because that's just so unrealistic for me as a black woman." Sorry that I hesitated, but yeah. But, yeah, but no, I, I understand it. I understand why. Mm -hmm. I understand why you did it because it's like, mm -hmm. hell yeah, I want to be married just like everybody else in the world. But mm -hmm. see, and that's what that's what hurts so many of our women because you won't go ahead and just say yeah i want to be married yeah i'm tired of this bullshit i'm tired of this i want it. yes i want all that see yeah. if we can get you guys to admit that part then we can have a conversation mm -hmm. then we can say okay if you know you want that then what are you willing to bring to the table in order to get that from because cause most women, most black women don't want to work after they get married, especially after they have a child. Hmm. I know. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I guess I agree with you on that one. In I say way, when they don't, I, when I, I say don't want you have to work. Listening to your show. So um, we have talks like this all the time. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you on, on one part of that. And I agree. And I don't. OK. You know? When I say don't want to work, what I mean is they don't want to have to work to pay significant bills. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so that's what I mean. I don't, I don't mean you want to sit at home and live an unproductive life to where you just all are. What I mean is you want black women want their men to have a hundred percent mindset to where he's taking care of everything. And she is not required to go out and work to pay significant bills. Although she will go right. work to add to whatever he's already doing, but it's him that she wants to do everything. She wants to rest in that fact. Do you mm, agree with that? Yeah. Do you agree with yeah, that? I agree with that. And that's I all. I'm, that. And I just said it a shortened way. I just said it a shortened uh -huh. way. And uh -huh. see, so many black women um, were raised like you to where you have a hard time even um, admitting some of these things because in the wrong places, you'd be called a pick me. Women would call you a fool. Girl, you stupid. You want a man to take care of you? You get savage mm. by saying a lot of this shit. Mm. Well, I have real girlfriends, so I keep it real with me. I only okay. keep real people around me. Cool. And they're honest with me. And I've never, you know, I I keep it real with them. I keep them 100 with them all the time, too. So, yeah, we admitted, I had admitted that before. Mm -hmm. And I know I wasn't called any names or anything. It was well, you like, know what I mean? Right, in gen I, mean, I mean, it just like in general, not around your people. Probably in general, yeah. So yeah. at being 38 years old, uh, uh, you know, a lot of sisters think it's too late. Mm. Some of them do. Some of them don't. Yeah. So but I guess if you're talking in general, yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> if, if you want. So if that's what you want. So if that's what you want, how long have you known you wanted to be married? Um, mm -hmm. all my life, I guess. Yeah. Since I was little. Okay. And you went to college. Like, I, I think that's every girl's childhood yeah. dream, I would think. Well, I, it, the thing is, it is, but black women aren't raised. There are very few women that I have met and spoke to that actually admitted to, no, I never want to get married. Right. Very few, though. But then when you yeah. ask the follow up question, did your mother raise you to be a wife? Mm. No, <laughs> she didn't. Right. So, did no. you? are you a college educator, sister? Yes, I am. All right. Uh, and what area of the country? Northeast, Southwest? I'm actually in the East. Okay. So if you know, if you know since you're yeah. a little girl that you would, you would love to be married, um, mm -hmm. 
Are you are you dating men on that level? I'm not even dating right now. No. Okay. Uh, care to share no. why? Right now, I'm not even dating. No. Well, because um, I was at one point, mm-hmm. and I was doing the online thing. It just it just wasn't working out. Okay. And um, I was like, you know what? Let me just get off this online thing. It just it got to be a little too much. And I was like, this is not. Mm. you know it wasn't I guess I, from my point of view I wasn't seeing the right type of men I always yeah go ahead Tell I, I guess I, I was thinking that they were playing games you right. know like but I get it there's a lot of women out there so there's a lot of competition mm-hmm. you know hold on guys get so... the guys get the likes up and we're gonna need <laughs> at least another 10 people to uh put something in the chat because we got something here okay mm-hmm. let me let me tell you one thing that I do know Okay. Blake Henry and Blue Henry are not online. Mm, okay. They're not. You know where they're at? Where they're at? They're out in the world killing shit. Where are they at? They're out in the world killing shit. Oh lord. They're out in the world. They're out <laughs> in the world fighting. The riots right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're out in the world competing against other men. They're out working. I'm competing against other men. Yeah. Working. Blake and Blue are out All putting right. in 16, 12, 16 hour days. They are online. Mm-hmm. Um. The guys you find online, uh, now I'm online, but I do it for a reason because it's also is market research for my business. But you don't tend to find high high stakes men there, just like you don't tend to find dime pieces online um, uh-huh. because they got a plethora of men. So from what I'm hearing mm-hmm. from you, you're a college educated sister. You know what you wanted, right. but yet yeah. in the East, are you in the tri-state area? Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. in a, com- very competitive up there and mm-hmm. you haven't been able to find the caliber of man you uh, want. So it's almost like a lot of sisters in your, in your, your, um, with your demographic tend to kind of give up. It's like, yeah. uh, it's like, it's true. It's like, you know what? Yeah. I didn't find him in college for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And then while all my white counterparts were getting married in their twenties and, early 20s and going to ba- baby showers and shit we were talking about going on girl trips and such and so forth then you look up at 30 and it still hasn't happened mm-hmm. and you don't end that desire but a, human nature is like this when you touch a hot pot you pull your finger back because it hurts so mm-hmm. when you keep touching re- relationships that don't work you pull back and what do you do right. a lot of sisters go get additional degrees double down in their careers um, mm-hmm. start doing this whole, you know, girl strip or whatever. But all it tends to happen yeah. is they end up running more of the clock out. And the closer you yeah. get to 40, you have mm-hmm. more negative or unfulfilled experiences than you do fulfilled ones. So it's easy to sit back and say, well, it ain't happened to this point. Is it ever going to happen? I mean, no one wants to admit that out loud, but it's just a numbers thing. I mean, you're an intelligent woman. You can sit back and say, I'm closer to 40 than I'm 25. So when is it ever going to happen? And I will say this, Mm -hmm. that my mother was 52, 51 when she got married. Mm. And she was- I have a a friend that actually just got married at 50. So she was the same, had the same mentality. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, is it ever going to happen? And it it happened for her. Right. So I'm so happy for her. What I'm getting, I I don't give up. What I'm I'm getting, what I'm getting to is two things for sisters Mm -hmm. like you. One, Mm -hmm. when you run across, I'll just call them the Henry's. When you run across Keith Henry, can you, Mm -hmm. can you, can you judge him just based on him and not everything else? That's one. Number two, okay. um, are you ready to stop fighting? Are you ready to go ahead and fall into it? Does that make sense? Not fighting. What what does that mean? Mean, mean mm-hmm. means it means that it's not uncommon for black women, women in general, black women in particular, to have to be very accomplished by this age. Right. Okay. Then you meet a guy like uh say somebody like myself. Um, I'm going, I don't care about your money or anything else like that. If you're my woman, that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. 
Would you be willing to reset the clock like you like and 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 be the woman you could have been at twenty three? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then then you're ready. Yeah. And that's the thing. And see, so, uh, you know, I've you've heard women on my channel talk about you know I didn't want to move, I didn't want to do this, I didn't want to do that. I heard that one. Somebody's yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, think about it. You're almost forty. You're going to be looking for guys who are older than you because you want men, you're hypergamous, let's be real. You're going to want them to have at least what you have, if not more, because you want to get into living this life that you haven't had for so long. Mm -hmm. All right. That means you're going to have to, somebody's going to have to move. You know, you got a house, mm -hmm. he got a house. You got a brownstone, what else? you're going to have to go. Things are going to have mm -hmm. to be given up in quick order. And it's like, well, I've been- You're going to have to make sacrifices. Psych compromises. You don't want to make sacrifices. I can't. Yeah, you don't want to make compromises. Yeah, you don't want to make yeah. sacrifices. For what we want. <laughs> sacrifices lead to resentment. Compromises means you're trying to win. Let's say, uh, let's say I was on the Upper West Side and you're in a brownstone in Brooklyn. Okay, mm -hmm. you move it to the Upper East Side. That's where you're going. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to Brooklyn. You're going to the Upper East Side because I'm putting in the 16 hour days. OK, right. but the net net of it is you can you figure out how to live in Manhattan and do what it is. Now, you'll see. And, and and the thing is, a lot of times we women get so into what if it don't work, then I got to give all that up. That's the fear. Are you right. willing to put the fear of it not working down? And that's why I always stress doing that mental work first and almost uh -huh. resetting it back to being optimistic like you were when you were a younger woman. Hmm. I got you. Got it. That's that's what a lot of men yeah. talk about when they talk about are you ready? Uh, what do you bring to the table? Are you ready to give up the fight? Mm -hmm. And um, okay. one thing, and 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 hopefully, more, as more and more of these conversations start to be had, more mm -hmm. women can start to see more men on their level having conversations with the, each other. Men having conversations with men, not having conversations with women. See, you can judge a lot by men by how we talk to one another. And that's what y'all really do. Yeah. When y'all see men work in a building, y'all just lay, lay back in the cut and say, he can say anything he want to to me because he's just trying to get in. But if he's mm -hmm. over there working with somebody, okay, okay, he's keeping it real with these dudes. Okay, those dudes stamp him as being an alpha male, a builder. Okay, uh, uh, okay. Then you're more likely than not to lower your guard and, and actually mm -hmm. let him do what he needs to do. Does that make sense? Right. That's no, what it makes a lot of that's sense. That's what you don't find online because it always feels like game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you don't see it. Yep. So, um, yeah. again, I'm not a dating coach. I'm an image consultant and a life coach, but I do have a lot of men around me and clients that are looking for the same kind of things you guys are looking for and I found it interesting that you can't find him and he can't find you. But when men yeah. find each other and start working together, women tend to find those spaces. That's why it's, that's why there's more women over here now. Hmm. So. Right. Well, okay. uh, did you join the did you join the uh Facebook group? No, I didn't. I'm not even on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> so. Well, but I will. Uh you I'm will. I'm going to put the link down in there, but yeah, stay keep coming to the channel. Okay. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you guys. Um, this is why I, you know, when men are doing what they're supposed to be doing, it makes it a lot easier for women who want to get on your page to stop having to meet you in their masculine. Um, everyone has a different way of coming at it, but that's what this whole CIA thing is. You put the work in, get out there and put the 12, 16 hour days in, keep your head down, build and do what you need to do. Even when I told her, what was I saying? You can't, it's hard to meet guys like that online because you don't see the work. But when a man has work to show, it's a lot easier for women to be like, oh, Okay. Now, see, some guys will say 38, that's too old. Well, it depends on how old you are. I, I, I mean, I know I have friends and, and colleagues of attorney brothers who she's a young woman to them. 
and it's one thing I think one thing that um being this this wide open YouTube space um everybody's coming at it from a from a different standpoint but when when men are looking for wives or long term relationships they move a hell of a lot different I was clapping what what are you talking about? I was clapping. She's uh, when you were twenty years old, huh? So here we go. All right, six hundred thirteen people watching. Hey man, I tell you right now, I love my my suit supply suits. I do. I love them. I love my Tom Ford suits, but I love a good fitting suit. Suit Saturday is fun because, especially when you have suits to fit good and wear well. So, the, the the let me also let you ladies, when you run into a man that knows what he wants, you know, these you should be happy that day. If you've done the work on you to make you ready for him. See, just like you don't want to build a bob or build a boo thing and help a brother out. When you got brothers out here who are actually getting out here and knocking it down, becoming masters of the universe on their own right, you got to be ready for him. And you won't be ready for him if you just quit. Let me say that again. You won't be ready for him when you just quit. Let me say it again. You won't be ready for him when you just quit. What well, you quit, that means your development has started. I mean, has stopped. If you quit at 29 and you mess around at 36 years old, well, you at best you are 29 years old from a relational age. More likely than not, you're probably about 20. People tend to pause or stop at the point of an emotional trauma. You ever met somebody or dated somebody who was one age, but they acted young? Human beings tend to nest in places of trauma until we work past those. So you, there's nothing as a you don't want to be a forty year old woman with a twenty nine year old uh, level of maturity, expecting men, uh, older men who are looking for a woman that age. He's not going to do a 29 year old. See, why are you quitting? Why are you not in the gym five days a week? Why are you not eating a plant based diet? Why are you not keeping your body together for you? Why are you why are you not walking out of the house uh, with your with your nails done, your toes did? Why are you not walking out of the house looking like a bad man pajama for you? Why are you not walking around? And, and everywhere you go with a smile on your face and pleasant to be around for you. See, if your only motivation as a woman is to do what it takes or look a certain way or act a certain way just to land a man, you're the kind of man women, you're the kind of woman men don't want to find. Because in our mind, as soon as you get, as soon as we get with you, you're going to get comfortable and you're going to stop doing that shit. Nope. That will not work. Women who, who are doing what the hell they need to do have the best chances of getting the help what they want out of life. Say what? Can I drop the link? Oh, yeah. Sure. There's a link. Sh Sugar P. I didn't, I didn't see what's going on. Chicketarian, yeah, I, I like, it. yeah. I couldn't do plant, plant, plant-based sugar pea. Just means plant as a majority of them. That just means plant as a majority. Um, but yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna give up chicken and fish. So that, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. I'm gonna always have some, some protein. Thirty-eight is hot. Yeah, tank. But there are options, you know. Uh, yep. Yep. Kyle, you're going to need to unmute. 
Hey, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. What do you got for me? Yeah. Um, so I am uh, 26. Um, I'm a young engineer. I'm in the tri-state area. Um, and for me, it seems like it's pretty difficult to kind of meet uh, folks that are my age that are kind of the same way, minded the same way, women that are that have the same type of mindset and that are serious about kind of finding a relationship that they actually want to build with somebody with. Where'd you go to school? Uh, Rutgers University. And your mate, and you were, and what's your degree in? Computer science. Computer science. And, I'm a software engineer. And you okay? And where do you, and and you're in where? And what city are you in? What city? Mm-hmm. Uh, I work out of New York City, but I live in north northern New Jersey. Okay. And it's hard for you to find. Say again. I think it. I think it's just it's hard to find women that are more relationship minded. I think in New York City, everybody is kind of fast paced. And I used to live in New uh, York City for five years. Fun. Where do you go? Where are you going to meet people? Uh, mostly um, meetups. I do a lot of um, volunteer work with like women in tech and mm-hmm. uh, minority in tech organizations. Uh, okay. Uh, happy hours with coworkers, stuff like that. Okay. Happy hours with coworkers. So that that's a that's a non you with coworkers. Um, mm-hmm. Where do you go to meet singles? Um, that's a tough one. I mean, there's some there's a few local spots that I frequent. Hold up, fam. Um, you're in the largest city in the United States, and you're telling me it's tough to go to meet singles. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think no. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's no. I don't think it's tough to meet singles. I think it's tough to meet folks that are relationship minded. Well, I think it's it's it's, hard, it's tough to meet people who are relationship minded when you don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna come knock on your door, Kyle. See, a lot of you guys want expect this to come easy. Uh, okay, let let me ask you about your 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 wolf pack. Do you ha- or your rat pack? Where where are the, do you have at least five guys, three to five men that you hang out with on a consistent basis? Yeah, I have um, I have a couple. Um, a couple. One is a one's a he's a banker, corporate banker. Is he married? Um, no, he is not. And what about the other one? Um, one just graduated uh, med school and will be starting his residency at a uh, NYU. Okay. And he's not married either. Okay. And and you're thirty. How old are you? I'm 26. 26. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, one, you're gonna you need to get those numbers up. That's number one. Number two, it is it takes more work to find people today. This is what it mm. is. So uh while I can say, um, you know, it sounds like you have some good things going on, but your generation spends a lot of time on the online. Online. Yeah. So if you're serious about finding like-minded people, you have to go somewhere with a singles focus. Volunteering is cool. Happy hour with friends, happy hour with coworkers. But then you got to still go somewhere purposely in order to interact with other people. Um, you live in New York City? No, we live uh, we live in northern New Jersey. And we do do a lot of stuff. Like we do um, we do some sports leagues like Zion. Okay, but when, you, sports, well, when you're when you doing sports, co-ed. okay, those are, I, I, you're active. I get it. But where are yeah. the single women? Yeah, it's it's hard. It's, I mean, I, I think around hard? here, it's probably North Jersey. It's hard? Like Logan, hard is not hard. It's not hard. Not hard. As yeah. you want it to be, you want, <laughs> you don't want to, okay. It's not hard. I mean, I, I lived in New York City. It's not hard to meet single women. They're literally on every freaking block. It's just your life mm. seems to be uh, constructed the way you want it to be. It's not really you're not open to doing the things you have to do to meet the kind of women you're talking about meeting. It's just numbers, Kyle. And when you tell me you're not actively going any places to meet single women, well, yeah, that is true. I do kind of just. I mean, I yeah, he said go to Hoboken, quit playing. I, I know, man, Hoboken. Are you kidding me? Structured schedule. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> see, see, here's the, here's the better question, Kyle. If mm-hmm. you if you went out next weekend and you and you ran it and you saw five women that were that did it for you, 
We just and they were yeah. five women that would do it for you. And they were all eight point fives and nines, and they gave you choosing signals. Would you walk over to them and oh. talk to them? Oh, I'm over there. Yeah. Okay. I'm over there. The the the. Well, you know, then, talking, then talking, if that's the case, the so then if boy. that's the case, you should have no problem getting out and about where singles go. Because if you have don't have the approach anxiety thing, and you can actively get out and network with people and socialize then you can't expect these people to be in your sports leagues and things like that. You got to go where the, women, where the people are. Yeah. That's all there is to it, man. It's not hard. You got to go. Yeah. All right, man. All right, man. Thanks for having me on. No problem. Take it easy. Yeah, guys. It's, it's See, a lot of times, um, you know, I like the salsa dance. But you can't salsa at a country and western bar. You kind of got to go where they play salsa music. You like the line dance. You like the two-step. Can't do that at a hip-hop club. You got to go where it is. You got to go where these things are. No problem. No problem. Janitos, that makes a good point. Xanatos Clutch says, no knock on Kyle. He's probably one of those guys who thinks since he's disciplined and hard work in the field, it else will come easy. Yep, that's a good point. That's a good point, especially for a lot of uh, a lot of my tech guys tend to have, if not Kyle, tend to have that mindset, thinking because I work hard and I'm financially accomplished that uh, women should just rain down. And no, um, this is why I'm a big fan of joining uh, the best gym. Join the, uh, like in Dallas, 24-hour fitness on I-75 and Royal Lane. I call it Club 24-hour. I call it Club 24-hour. That is the place back in the day where folks used to, used to see women out in the, in the, in the parking lot putting on makeup to go into a spin class. Because people were going to get their workout on and they was going to meet. Because right in that little area, there used to be a lot of nightclubs around there. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> so here's the thing, guys. Um, if you're interested in joining uh, the uh, Get in the Mix, get in the mix. If you're interested in getting in the mix, remember, CIA men, FBI women. Here you go. And you got to, and guys, remember to answer the questions. Basic questions, age current marital status and what you are interested what kind of relationship you're interested in or looking for um only thing we don't do over there is lies no lying all right, we don't do lies all right guys uh that was pretty quick we got that handled uh tomorrow night we're going to do a different kind of show and i'm also going to get to a lot of these super chat questions that i haven't got a chance to get to uh <clears throat> la fitness yeah man see if if I were in my 20s or 30s, first of all, uh, no shot at my dudes that live in have houses in the suburbs. When I was in DFW, I, I lived in Deep Ellum. But if I were back in, in, in Dallas, I would be living in West Village. Or there's an area around the tollway. It's called like the shops at Frisco, you know. West Village are up there. The uptown area has kind of always been happening. I would live where the yuppies live. I would pay more money for a smaller place and live there. So where on, you could walk to, you should be a fixture at local places. Glorious. Uh, uh, you should be a fixture on a patio somewhere. The server should know your name. The manager should know your name. The bartender should know what you drink. You should get you should be out. Why are you at home as a single man? Shower, shit, sleep. It's all you need to be at home for. Especially if you live in a tri when I was in Manhattan, I used my refrigerator for extra storage. And I would go home for the, with, with the shower and sleep and then, you know, to get it in. I lived off 43rd between 10th and 11. Get out. See. Um, I was going to do a show called 
fuckboys and lazy losers. But I decided not to <laughs> because though that is not my audience. But one thing I got to I got to get you guys to start realizing you got to put the work in. You cannot sit. A, you cannot. You cannot. You got to get out, move around, network. And not just do network in your own areas and your own specialties. Pick up a hobby. What did I say? Pick up a hobby. Pick up a take, take up photography. Where's my camera? It's over there. Photography. Great hobby to pick up. You know how many women. <laughs> <laughs> it's over there. You know how many women, beautiful women, will stop, smile at you, wave because you have a, a a camera in your hand. I walk around here in the shops at Buckhead with my camera. And... Great conversation starter. You got a camera on, and you're smelling like you don't have to smell like these uber expensive fragrances. But you smell like one of these. You got your camera on. You got your camera. You got your nice frames on. You know, got your artistic kind of flow on. Let's say you don't have a suit on. It's not suit Saturday. But you got on a nice button up or a Henley or a polo shirt, some cool jeans, some boots or some trousers or whatever. And you sit around taking photos, smelling good. And they're like, hmm. Hmm. Camera? It's not a it's not a throwaway camera. It looks like a, an actual DSLR. That's a full frame camera. Check. Kick ass frames. Check. Nice shoes. Check. Smells good. Check. Hi. You in there? You in there like swimwear? And all you have to do is speak. Speak back. And honestly, the sooner you get to the business, the better. Beating around the bush. How's the weather? What do you do? Whatever, whatever. If she's flirting with you, flirt back. That's the video. What to do after the compliment. I know that's what really gets most of you guys. What gets most of you guys is you don't know how to talk to women. You don't know how to talk to people. That's what gets most of you guys. You don't know how to talk to women in order to get them interested in you and you get you get locked in the friend zone. You're like when you're like Zod and in, in them in those folks. You're floating around in that fucking friend zone. Ah! Cause you cause you have not learned how to escalate and get her to be intrigued. You lack aggression. You don't say, oh, I smell good, but I taste better. When are you gonna find out? What? You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say that. You would not say that because you're like, I wouldn't say that. She may curse me out. She's not going to curse you out. You smell good. I taste better. When are you going to find out? <laughs> no, seriously. What's your name? And go from there. See how that rolled off? You need two or three of those in your in your backpack, in your utility belt. Shoot your shot. Because even if it lands with a dud over here, She's over there with her friends. They were like, ooh, at least he stepped. Oh, I'm so nice. That's great. But I'm married. Good. <laughs> Is your friend married? You know, maybe we can be one day too. Move on. Trust me. Women love men who smell good, who are confident, and who are assertive. Confident, intelligent, or the intelligent part a lot of you guys got. The confidence, you're confident in certain things, but you're not confident in your interpersonal skills or whatever. Therefore, you don't assert. That's why you see guys who may not necessarily be the best looking guys, maybe not even, the, you know, even leading with their money, not their wallet, their money. You wonder why, why are certain guys end up having, because they assert. Assert, assert, assert. All right, guys, I got to get up out of here. Good show. Good show. They got Atlanta on lockdown. Uh, curfew is happening. Uh, it's almost 11 o'clock. I had a little something, something. Hmm. Well, we'll see how that works. We'll see how that works. Remember, guys, ladies and gentlemen, to get in, to be up in the mix, you just got to be on your grown folks' behavior. Again, we're talking about having people that are cut above, not the same old BS, not looking to have the same old 
conversation that can be had anywhere. It's for personal and professional networking. We're not looking for the drama posts and all that other kind of stuff. We're looking for people who are of like mind, who just can handle some grown damn conversation. Let me get up out of here. Until the next time, peace. We are gone.